Good morning, folks. This is Commissioner Gonzalez, uh, Vice Chair, and I'm going to start today the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission meeting, Thursday, April 2nd. It is 9.17, and we'll be doing this by teleconference. Uh, I have no control over the screen that's in front of me, the PDF. No. And I so I, I can see my agenda on the side, but uh, do you... The first item is we done roll call already. Do you want to do roll call again? Um, okay. Sure. Can I have control of the PDF screen or? No, I will control that for you. Do you want to scroll that up? There's there's nothing next until we start our agenda. There's nothing what? There's not another PowerPoint screen until we start our agenda. I thought we were starting. Yeah, the, when we when we go into like consent item, we'll go ahead and um, scroll up. So, so let me take, you, let me roll call. Okay. Just roll call. Commissioner Lowe. Here. Commissioner Bertrand. Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Bertrand? Here. Commissioner Randy? Here. Commissioner Johnson? Here. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? She's having trouble with her audio, but I know she's on. Commissioner Caput? Here. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Here. Commissioner Friend? Commissioner Mulhern? Commissioner Leopold? Here. Commissioner McPherson? I know he's gonna be on shortly. Commissioner Botorf? Commissioner Gonzalez? Here. And Commissioner Rotkin? Okay, that was your roll call. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, can we screen up on the PDF or the PowerPoint? We're on the, so we're on the oral communications now on the agenda. Is there any, anyone from the public that'd like to speak at this moment for oral communications? <clears throat> Go ahead, Mike. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, well, I guess I, I get to be the guinea pig here. Here we go. Um, with, uh, who's speaking? Uh, this is Michael Saint with Campaign Michael. for Sustainable Transportation. Great. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. I, I really appreciate you guys doing this video conferencing. And Yesenia, you're doing a great job. Um, and I just hope everyone's and yourself and your families are doing well. This is um, a very strange time we're going through, uh, but I think overall, maybe we can learn from this tragic event and uh, find a silver lining somewhere in the mix here. Um, we've had our video conferencing last week at Campaign for Sustainable Transportation. Um, it went very well, but as you know, you just, we're all trying to do things a little differently. So. It was very interesting watching you, Yusinia, get everybody organized. So I uh, really appreciate it. Um, I think there are definitely some comparisons between COVID-19 uh, and climate change. Um, two of the things is they're both very, very real, and they both can affect positive changes in our behavior as a society. Um, but I have uh, sent an op-ed to Sentinel, which was accepted a few days ago, and uh, seen several in, the, in there, and mainly the theme of that was that climate change is still our most serious threat. Although this COVID-19 is hitting us personally, um, I feel people, I guess it's human nature, even though they see people around them getting sick, 
and people dying, there are still people out there that are denying that this is actually happening and, and not following the social distancing. Um, pretty much call this kind of the head in the sand uh, kind of a characteristic. And that has definitely happened with climate change as well as our transportation issues. Um, one of the examples I have here personally is my son, Matt, my wife, Elizabeth, and myself are presently all three of us on video conferencing and telecommunicating. And I think what it's done for me, it's hit home on how important this telecommunicating can be to reduce our congestion in Santa Cruz County. And I think if we miss this opportunity, we've done a disservice for our community. Um, Tell community as well as a possibly a bus school program run by Metro would be two things that I think we should use our some funding for and also do some outreach. Uh, Metro is hurting definitely and they're going to continue to hurt and I think we need other ways to find uh, some type of uh, income for them and if they run a nice uh, robust busing program for children you not only help congestion you help Metro. So just to end this thing and continue on with your meeting, I think a lot of time and money should be spent for promoting these two features, telecommunicating and a school bus program and allow Metro to handle this. Uh, they, they need to fill up those seats. It's gonna be a little hard because people are still gonna be a little bit cautious about being infected even after the um, virus is gone and we have some type of thing to control it. But I think there's two very important things. If we don't emphasize those, we're going to miss the boat and, and miss one of the silver linings in this tragic event. Thank you for your time and have a great day. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, anybody else would like to speak now in the oral communication? Is there any more public they'd like to speak during oral communication? I don't see anyone else. Uh, so is there any commissioner they'd like to uh, speak now during oral communication? Just say something, right? Where are we going? No, no, it's, it's right here. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, hearing none, I'll go ahead and move to item three, additions or deletions to consent and regular agenda items. Is there any additions or deletions to the consent or regular agenda? Uh, there is a handout for item 18. There are no other additions or deletions to the agenda. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to the consent agenda item. Uh, the minutes. Consent agenda is October through 16. I would move the consent agenda if it's if it's the appropriate time. I'll second. This is we Andy. Have first, we have a first by John Leopold and a second by Schifrin. Andrew. Yes. Um, I guess here we can uh, do a roll call. Yes. Well, should we ask for public community uh, if anybody in the public oh, wants yeah. to say anything? Sorry about that. No back up. Is there anybody from the public that like to comment on any other items from the consent agenda on the consent agenda seeing none is there any commissioner they'd like to pull any items from the consent agenda at this time hearing none we have a motion and a second uh can we have a roll call? Uh, Commissioner Lowe. Sorry, I'm not voting. Okay. Commissioner Bertrand. Aye. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez texted a yes vote. She's still having issues with her audio. <clears throat> Excuse me, Commissioner Caput. Yeah. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commissioner Leopold? Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez? 
Yes. And Commissioner Rotkin. Commissioner McPherson. Keys on yet. Okay. Okay. Move on. We're going to go ahead and move on to the regular agenda. Uh, item number 17, commissioner reports, oral reports. Is there any commission reports or oral reports that they'd like to give now? Hearing none, I'm going to go ahead and move to item 18, director's report and an oral report from uh, Guy Preston, executive director. Good morning, commissioners and public. Thank you for attending today's meeting. Uh, um, as is evident by today's meeting, the uh, Regional Transportation Commission is working. Uh, we are primarily working at home. There is um, some um, essential services being done in our office, as well as hosting this morning's meeting. Um, other than um, uh, hosting meetings at our physical location, the general public is, um, uh, the office is closed to the general public, um, but it is available for um, um, those who need um, um, accessibility for meetings such as uh, this morning. Um, all of our staff is doing well, and um, we are definitely um, moving forward with our programs. Um, uh, starting with the first item on my director's report is an update on the emergency rail line bridge repair project. At the March 19th transportation policy workshop meeting, staff provided information regarding damage to a tr timber trestle bridge located on the Santa Cruz branch rail line at milepost 4.57. In order to prevent a potential critical failure to the bridge, the commission authorized me to enter into emergency contracts to provide envir environmental services, engineering designs, construction management, and construction. Over the past two weeks, I have entered into the following two contracts. A sole source contracts with, contract with RailPros Incorporated for an amount not to exceed 20801 dollars and 33 cents to prepare engineering to replace bent three, armoring around bents three, seven, eight, and 10, a drainage ditch, and review of contractor false work plans, and a sole source contract with Rail and Surveyors Incorpor um, Engineering Incorporated for an amount not to exceed $46,525 for construction management. Staff is negotiating a contract for environmental services, but a contract has not yet been executed. Prior to entering into the new contract with RailPros, staff directed RailPros to commence work using RTC's existing contract with them for bridge inspections. Added work included the emergency inspection and development of preliminary plans needed for the repair. This work was tracked on this existing contract and staff intends to return to the commission next month to amend that contract to replenish its budget. An amendment to the original contract with RailPros will be needed to ensure that there are sufficient funds in that contract to complete work anticipated in the original scope. Last week, RTC engineer Sarah Christensen performed a pre-construction bid meeting on site with one contractor present and another contractor on Skype. The contractor who attended in person is local and is available to mobilize immediately. Their expertise is at grade rail infrastructure, including earthwork. The other contractor is based in Wisconsin and stated that they were willing to reprioritize their work to quickly mobilize from Seattle. The Wisconsin contractor has considerable timber trestle bridge experience with material available to be used on the RTC project. I was considering possibly executing two contracts to take advantage of contractors' complementary services. However, since then, the Wisconsin contractor has decided not to pursue the work due to concerns associated with the COVID-19 situation. RSE, who will be managing the construction work, has been in contact with additional contractors to gauge interest. Our biggest concern has been providing enough detail to quantify the extent of work needed, especially with respect to earthwork and grading. 
Bid documents were released to contractors yesterday, April 1st. If we cannot get bids with a reasonable level of confidence, it may be in the best interest of RTC to enter into one or more construction contracts with qualified contractors on a time and material basis. My goal is to get a contractor mobilized as quickly as possible in a matter that will minimize risk and control costs. I will provide additional updates at the next RTC meeting. I have an um, update on the impacts of COVID-19 on TDA funded transportation services. Starting first with Santa Cruz Metro. Santa Cruz Metro is operating their weekend schedule all seven days of the week until further notice. This means fewer buses running less frequently with later start times and earlier end times. All school term service is suspended until further notice. Paracruz, which is a service provided to the elderly and disabled and operated by Santa Cruz Metro, is providing service to and from essential services such as doctor appointments and dialysis. In compliance with the shelter in place order, travel in Santa Cruz County is prohibited except for essential activities and passengers must maintain six feet of physical distance at all times, both on the bus and off the bus. Community bridges. Lift line, which is also a service to provide um, transportation for the elderly and disabled and operated by community bridges, expanded its service to provide essential trips to grocery stores, pharmacies, and other locations. Lift line has temporary remo temporarily removed the need for an application to schedule rides in order to remove barriers and assess access to riders until the end of the shelter in place order. Meals on Wheels of Santa Cruz County's congregate dining centers are closed until further notice. Participants who need food delivered are being added to home delivery meal routes. Shelf stable meals are being made available to homeless seniors distributed through local hotspots and shelter coordination. Elder Day has been reduced to serving two clients, excuse me, to a limited number of clients, but due to the lack of financial support to provide these services at home, Elder Day is planning to shut down um, today, April 2nd. The Volunteer Center of Santa Cruz County had to cancel 118 rides for seniors using their transportation program services. To meet the needs of their most vulnerable seniors in the community, the Volunteer Center developed the Grocery Shopper Program as a fully vetted volunteer program to provide food, groceries, and medication pickup services to the most at-risk group of COVID-19 virus. The Volunteer Center is also working to screen, recruit, and train volunteers. They will receive grocery requests from participants and will attempt to purchase and deliver using approved physical distancing guidelines, those grocery items and pharmacy medications to the individual. The goal is to serve low income seniors age 60 plus that are health compromised. First priority will be to serve those who do not have access to a computer to purchase groceries and those who do not currently have the support of families or friends. AmeriCorps tech support will be available by phone for seniors who have computers and need help navigating the various online shopping platforms. The volunteer centers has already begun to support their 135 clients with the new grocery shopper program. And on April 1st, yesterday, they began to offer support to participants of the senior service provider network. I have an update on transit economic stimulus legislation. The $2 trillion COVID-19 emergency stabilization package agreed upon by Congress and the White House was signed into law last week. The legislation includes $25 billion for public transportation relief with $3.7 billion for California operators. Funds are expected to flow quickly through the Federal Transit Agency designated recipients via formula and have broad eligibility to fund operating expenses, including reimbursements for lost revenue, operating costs, and other operating expenses related to COVID-19 response. Per the funding package, transit agencies may use the funds to purchase personal protective equipment and to pay the administrative 
leave and operations personnel due to reductions in service. Highlights include the following. Funding would be apportioned no later than seven days after the passage of the funding package. Funding would not be subject to obligation limitations. Funding expenses would not need to be included in a TIP, SIP, or RTP. Emergency assistance does not require matching funds. It'll be 100% federal. In mid-March, the Transit Ad Advocacy Group Trans Center estimated that transit agencies will experience losses this year anywhere between 26 and $38 billion, which is higher than the transit stimulus funding. Transit agents Agencies will need more operating funds to guarantee that they can run enough trains and buses to avoid overcrowding and maintain physical distancing. There has been considerable outreach to RTC regarding um, the impacts on transit. We continue to respond to their surveys, and we hope any subsequent stimulus bills will provide even more funding for transit. I have an update on TDA and Measure D allocation estimates to local jurisdictions. Each year, the Regional Transportation Commission provides allocation estimates to Transportation Development Act and Measure D recipient agencies. This year's estimates are based on the proposed budget, which is part of today's agenda. Although traditional TDA funding will be impacted by the effects of COVID-19 on economic activity, RTC will do everything possible to meet the TDA allocation estimate. The aforementioned stimulus funding is expected to assist with that effort. RTC is also prepared to use TDA reserves, which have been set aside for emergencies such as this. RT staff, RTC staff will continue to monitor TTA reve TDA revenues and update the commission and recipient agencies as soon as more information becomes available. RTC has notified direct allocation recipients of Measure D who receive formula funding that Measure D revenue is expected to be less than forecast due to the national emergency. Unlike TDA, local sales tax did not receive any funding from the recently passed stimulus bill, and Measure D does not have a reserve fund. Recipients of direct allocation formula funds were reminded that revenue distributions will be based on actual, actual revenues received, not on the estimates, estimates provided. RTC and direct recipients have been on a cycle of approving annual five-year program of project updates in the spring, prior to commencement of the new fiscal year, and oftentimes as part of their capital improvement program or agency budgets. Due to the uncertainty of revenue forecasts, RTC plans to delay the approval of this year's five-year program of projects for regional programs until new forecasts can be developed. While many direct allocation agencies prepare their direct allocation five-year plan updates as part of the development of their annual budget or capital improvement budget program. Some agencies may want to wait to use more conservative estimates this spring. RTC is providing that option. More information will be provided as it is developed. In the interim, the most recent five-year program of projects will be used and can be amended depending on a project's immediate needs. I have an unfortunate update on the North Coast Rail Trail, Segment 5, Funding and Schedule. The Federal Highway Administration has notified RTC by the attached letter to this report that due to cost overruns on their other projects, they are changing the construction programming to mid-federal fiscal year 2024. This would correspond to a summer 2024 construction start date, which is almost a three year delay. RTC staff met with the Central Federal Lands team on March 26 to discuss the status of their design work and to come up with a game plan. We agreed that we should continue to press forward with all pre-construction work on the current schedule. CFL has committed the resources to complete the design and we are making good progress on resolving the right-of-way issues. With this effort, the full project should be shovel-ready by the middle of 2021 as planned. CFL has already identified this project as a candidate for potential stimulus funding. Therefore, continuing to work on our existing schedule is very important to get the project construction ready 
for this or other potential funding opportunities. We are also planning to apply for phase two of the next planned Federal Lands Access Program or FLAP grant, which is expected to issue a call for projects in the fall 2020, but that funding isn't expected to be available to 2025. Again, I emphasize we are moving forward with this project as we believe stimulus funding is on the horizon. There has been recent discussions with the federal government and the and Congress regarding stimulant fund, stimulus funding and shovel ready projects are those that will likely be targeted. I have an update on enhanced mobility of seniors and individuals with disabilities project. At their March meeting, the California Transportation Commission approved funding for the section 5310 enhanced mobility of seniors and individuals with disabilities projects which include three projects in Santa Cruz County. Community Bridges secured $195,537 to replace three paratransit vehicles and operations equipment. UCSC secured 168,000 to replace three paratransit minivans that serve students, staff, faculty, and campus visitors living with permanent or temporary disabilities who are unable to use the campus shuttle. The Senior Council secured $261,786 for a new, for a two-year period to provide mileage reimbursements and or transit fare reimbursements for low-income individuals volunteering with the Senior Council's Foster Grandparents and Senior Companion Program. I have an update on Transit Corridor Alternatives Analysis. The Transit Corridor Alternatives Analysis team has drafted its results of the initial screening in a short list of alternatives, also known as Milestone 2. Input will be solicited from the public and stakeholders on Milestone 2 for a four-week period by means of an online format. That is a two-week increase from what we originally planned due to the COVID-19 issues. This item is expected to be brought to the June 4, 2020 RTC meeting with community after community input in order to seek RTC board approval of the screening analysis results and the short list of alternatives. The approximate timeline is as followed. On April 13th, we will start public stakeholder input through our online activities. On May 11th will be the end of online activities. May 25th, we will um, finalize our staff report and on June 4th, we will seek approval from the RTC board on screening analysis in the short list of alternatives. With that, I would like to again, thank all of those individuals who are putting their safety on the line to provide essential services, specifically those related to transportation. I provided significant um, information today on some of those services being provided and um, the community as a whole really appreciates what those individuals are doing to ensure that transportation services are still provided to our community. With that, I conclude my director's report. Looks like Commissioner McPherson is on the line. Commissioner McPherson, is that you on the line? This is Mike Rock and I'm, I am on the line now. Okay. You hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I don't want to speak. I just want to let you know I'm here. I'm, I was here at 915. Thank you, Mike. Is there any questions for the director on his report from any commissioner? Yes, this is Andy. I have a, a question. Go ahead, Andy. This has to do actually really maybe with the next uh, item, but since uh, the director talked about uh, status of stimulus funding, I, I wonder, given the current uncertainty, whether it makes sense to continue the budget until our next meeting, when hopefully we'll have more information about uh, how realistic it can be for the 2020-21 year. So I just wanted to ask that question. It seemed to make sense to uh, give us a uh, give us more time before making this decision and sending a message to other agencies about what the funding may be. That's a very difficult question, 
to answer. Um, we put a lot of thought into it. We also looked at what other agencies are doing. Um, what we have found is almost uniformly across the state where budgets had already been prepared that uh, agencies are moving forward to get those budgets approved. So we have a budget in place at the beginning of the fiscal year. Although we may have more information next month, um, we would have to do considerable work to modify the budget. And we are looking at um, possibly doing an amendment as early as May, um, but there's always risk associated with um, each time we don't have a budget in place uh, once the fiscal year begins that we would um, potentially not be prepared to continue operations. So most agencies are approving their budgets, um, continuing to do amendments as more information becomes available and um, I'm moving forward um, with that sort of a process. Um, you know, like you said before um, you started your comment, uh, this item is on the regular agenda and we can have more discussion at that time if uh, we feel it's warranted. Thank you, Andy. Is there any other commissioner that has any other questions for the director on his uh, report? I guess I have one more thing I'd like to say about the- uh, Go ahead, Andy. On the, uh, in terms of the report on this project. Um, Andy, Andy, could you do me a favor? Could you speak a little bit uh, closer to your mic or- can you, can you fade? We can't hear you. No, it's worse. We can't hear you. I haven't had this problem before. There you go. You're good. Good now. Okay. I guess the further away I go, the yeah, better I now. sound. <laughs> okay. I wanted to comment on the North Coast project and thank the uh, director for his report. Uh, while it is discouraging that the funding may be uh, delayed. In fact, uh, given the history with previous stimulus uh, grants, having shovel ready projects really makes an enormous uh, difference. So I'm glad that the staff is committed to moving forward as quickly as possible uh, with uh, getting this project to the point where it is shovel ready so that if new money comes along, we'll be, uh, we'll be ready to move on it. So I just wanted to add my support to the staff, um, the, the staff recommendation on that, the director's recommendation. Thank you, Andy. Is there any other fellow commissioner that'd like to have a question for the director's report? Hearing that, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the item 19, Caltrans report. Hello, commissioners, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. go ahead. All right. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. I also would like to thank uh, the commission for carrying on um, in this format with this meeting. It's important for us, I think, to come together and do uh, to do the important work uh, the group does to ultimately keep critical infrastructure in place. Uh, transportation, as you know, is identified as one of those elements um, that's essential to our functioning. And uh, as everyone else is, Caltrans is also working very hard uh, through this uh, COVID-19 pandemic to keep the highways open, number one, and to keep our construction contracts on track as best as we can. We're continuously evaluating all of our activities to ensure um, you know, ensure the health and safety of all of our employees, our contractors, and the public. We do have about uh, $1 billion of construction contracts um, underway statewide. So we're, we're working hard to keep, keep that moving and then keep the new contracts coming uh, in support of that. We do have a, a, a very high proportion of our office staff who are teleworking and uh, keeping the projects moving, keeping our plans going, uh, and so forth. So we're doing our best to keep, keep things rolling. And I would just like to point out uh, the project on your update list there under our item there, project number 18, the, uh, uh, the uh, pedestrian enhancements project. We did uh, receive the bids. We expect to award the contract uh, in, uh, 
by June and get the work underway this summer. So I wanted you to know that that was moving along as well. Any questions for me? Yeah, Eileen, I, I have a question. That's the uh, Marchin and Beach, Beach Street projects, pedestrian number 18? Uh, that, yes, um, yes, Mr. Chair, that, that, that location is, that location is included. Yeah, I know there's multiple ones in Monterey County also there's some. Yes. Uh, is, is that like uh, going to be a 150 day out lead time still from June? Well, um, according to the report, it's yeah, the, yeah, the, from, the um, from the awarding of the account of, of the bid. Yeah, there's that's like a specialty item. So they have to order that. Um, Construction will start this summer. Uh, if you want the details on each location, uh, we, we, um, I can probably get more information for you. But it's uh, it's scheduled to go to go to um, construction this summer. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, Caltrans? Seeing it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for participating. Uh, be safe. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to item uh, 20, approval of fiscal year, fiscal 2020-21 proposed budget staff report. Good evening, Commissioners. This is Tracy New, Director of Finance and Budget. You have back feed from somewhere. I think we're ready. Um, staff presented the proposed budget at the March 12th Budget Personnel and Administration Committee meeting prior to the outbreak of COVID-19 and the shelter in place. As we receive information, staff is evaluating and preparing for the fiscal impact. Staff is communicating directly with all partner agencies and local jurisdictions. We are waiting to hear from our partners at the state about how the federal bill may provide assistance with projected shortfalls in transit funding. HDL has provided us with updated projections. Um, as the events unfold, um, we will be bringing this information to the commission. And um, we're waiting to hear more about how the governor's executive order on extending deadlines for tax reporting and payment may impact timing of Measure D payments from the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. Um, at this time, based on all of this information, staff is recommending the commission approve the proposed budget drafted before the outbreak of COVID-19. No one knows exactly how long this will go and what the final impact may be on tax revenues. Um, we have started to prepare scenarios that we plan to share with the commission in May and update again in June. The staff report includes regional programs and project work to be completed during the fiscal year. We've listed these in the proposed budget recommendations. Um, I'm happy to go through the highlights or um, I can answer specific questions. Is that, is that your report, uh, Tracy? Is there any questions for me, Commissioner, uh, for the staff? Yes. Go yes. ahead, Mike. Thank you. Um, the, if we pass the budget as it is currently structured and we have to make like major uh, amendments, for example, in the worst case scenario, cutting it, you know, lots of funds to various groups, do we face any liability that we've been sort of set them off on a path of for being believing they have a certain amount of money coming or is that something that we can just amend if we're forced to do so by the circumstances? That's a so staff for question. TA, we um, approve an allocation directly to the recipients. Um, what the executive director has um, mentioned earlier in his report is that we are communicating with our um, the local jurisdictions and recipients about what this uh, shortfall may mean. Um, we do have a reserve budget that's available we would need to um, come back and possibly, um, I mean, I don't know a lot about the history prior. I do know we have money to cover um, the near term, but we would have to go back and talk to our partner agencies and the local jurisdictions to adjust um, the allocations, depending on how long this lasts and what the final impact is. For Measure D, we only distribute the actual revenues we receive. Um, again, we're communicating with everybody to let them know what our most recent projections are and how we feel this will impact our cash flow going forward. I'll let um, Executive Director Preston um, add to this. So, um, you know, it, these are very good points. Um, as far as I know, um, our budget 
is a separate document and is not a legal commitment to any agency. Um, so when revenues do come in that are less than projected, and this has happened in the past, um, we have not been um, legally obligated to provide as much as what was provided in the original budget. Another good reason to approve the budget as planned today is um, it'll be able to be used as a tool for us to see what the actual impacts um, are um, from the COVID-19 issue compared to what we anticipated when we um, were originally budgeting and forecasting um, uh, what our needs were and what our revenues were going to be. So um, like uh, um, Ms. New stated, we have been in constant communication with our transit agencies, with all of our recipients in terms of you know, what the impacts may be. We have gotten inquiries from, from various different agencies and we've been letting them know exactly where we stand and where it's going to go. We could try to uh, amend the, you know, we, we are looking at amending the budget as early as May. Um, um, that forecast likely will not be accurate either. Um, we're going to have to do um, a lot of budgeting this year and a lot of adjusting this year to try to um, see where we are and, um, and, and make sure that we don't um, overextend our, ourselves as we move forward during the fiscal year. I still recommend that uh, we approve the budget as, as currently proposed um, with uh, full knowledge that we're going to have to come back and make amendments to it uh, to adjust for, for the impacts. Um, that, that stated, um, we do, you know, as Ms. New mentioned, we do have a TBA reserve. There is stimulus pack, package funding out there that um, is going to help uh, TBA. There could be future stimulus funding that could help some of our other revenues. So I still recommend that we move forward with the budget as planned. This is, so this is Mike. I, I'm persuade, persuaded by the uh, director's uh, argument that we ought to pass the budget rather than wait till we know more. But I'm also concerned that we not simply use our reserves to keep stuff at the current level while we, you know, we're finding out so that I would not make that presumption. In other words, we might rather spread our money out over the year or whatever, rather than spend it at the current level with the reserves and then find ourselves with a cliff that we're going to fall off. I have a question. Does Andy, go ahead, Randy. Can I respond to that? I think and, the, Andy, Andy, uh, Randy had a question. Yeah, I just wanted to respond to the Andy, concern that Mike just on, raised. I'm, I'm acknowledging Randy. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said yeah, me. Um, I didn't mean to, <clears throat> excuse me, interrupt. So, I guess what bothers me a little bit is that we have a budget committee that makes recommendations. And the recommendations apparently came before all the lockdowns from the from both the federal and state governments. Um, so to me, it seems a little bit reckless to approve a budget that we know is going to face severe shortfalls. Why wouldn't we want to bring this back to the budget committee for some very, very good scrutiny on where we're going. Um, right now, it seems like this budget is pretty much um, business as usual. And, you know, uh, with the caveat that, hey, maybe in May we'll have to make some adjustments. To me, that's not good enough really for the taxpayers. I mean, they expect us, I mean, we're sending a message that, that we're going to approve this and we might make some changes here and there. No, I think it me needs more scrutiny. I can't support a I, I can't support voting yes on this budget today when the recommendations came from the budget committee uh, almost um, a month ago when things were not severely impacted. So what would what would be the problem of us of the of the budget committee uh, forming again? looking at this line by line and then, then going uh, moving forward with at least some indication of where we're going to be not you know not having to wait for two months and say oh okay now we know where we are i think it's very important that we as a, as a commission know where we are financially you know not in may or june but uh in april that's kind of what i have to say and and it does bother me that Again, the direct revenue from, for each of the cities 
is going to have a uh, you know direct shortfall. Apparently, if I heard Guy correctly, um, where um, you know some of these other programs, it seems like are not going to be affected. So there's that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Go ahead, Andy. I acknowledge you. Thanks a lot. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Andy. Yes. I wanted to respond to Mike uh, first in terms of the use of the reserves and why it makes sense to use the reserves if we, if, if in fact the revenue drops during this budget year. Um, and that's because all the agencies have uh, prepared their 2021 budgets based on uh, the, the allocations that were um, granted through the 2021 budget. So to the extent that our revenue doesn't meet those levels, um, in the past, it would be tremendous hardship for agencies like the transit district having to, to redo their budget, you know, when the year is almost over and absorb a, a, uh, a decline of a couple hundred thousand dollars. So that, from my understanding, is really the purpose of the reserves is to help get through the current year uh, as a minimum, should things uh, take a nosedive. And so I think that rather than tr thinking of using the reserves over next year, we, we need to you know, try to assure our, the various agencies that have based their budgets this year on, the, um, on the, the allocations that we provided, that they'll actually get that money to the extent we have the money to do that. And that's, that's what the reserves will do. In terms of what what Randy was saying and, and you're holding it off, I started out with that notion myself and raised that question during the, the director's report. But I think uh, the director made a couple of good points in terms of um, why it might make sense to approve the budget uh, as you know as recommended, recognizing it's the fact that it's going to have to be amended to send it back to the budget committee now. Um, and as the chair of the budget committee, I was thinking about what that would mean. We don't have, we have so little information about what the effects are actually going to be. We don't know about the stimulus. We don't know about um, the drop in PDA, the potential drop in PDA revenues. We need to get a new, um, uh, uh, estimate from the auditor. We don't know when that's going to come. So what I understood Guy to be saying we, is that, look, if we adopt the budget today, we'll have a base upon which to analyze the changes that are going to have to be made. Um, it sounded like he's going to keep, that the intention is to keep all the other agencies informed as we have information about the changes. But at this point, at least we'll have a document that we can be amending at the time that we have more information. I'm not sure that between now and our May meeting, um, we're going to have any definitive information that would uh, help us understand how this budget has to be changed. I think there's no question that it's going to have to be changed, but I think having something that's, that is the, you know, sort of the base that we're operating off is, um, is helpful. And as long as it's presented to the public in that context, that this isn't the, this is our final budget. This is a, this is our starting point. And once we have additional information, we'll, um, we'll make the changes that, that seem prudent. And hopefully by next month, we'll know enough to be able to come up with some amendments. Um, if the, if it makes sense to have a special meeting of the budget and administration committee to consider amendments, I think that makes sense. But at this point, it, everything seems so uncertain, and in term, and including when we're even going to get information, that you know, my recommendation at this point is that we uh, ad ad adopt the recommend the staff recommendation recommended budget as a preliminary um, as a preliminary budget, with the understanding that it's going to need to be changed based on the effects of the. Uh, the changes in the economy once we have additional information. That would be my recommendation. This is Mike with a comment. Thank you, Andy. Mike, do you have one more comment? Yes, uh, quickly. Um, I, I agree. I'm not going to repeat the things Andy said that I agree with. I will point out that the transit district always passes a 
um, preliminary budget for claims purposes in, I think, March, um, even though we know it's going to be dramatically different by the time we do a final budget in June, I don't think there's a problem with, with having a preliminary budget that's, um, you know, I wouldn't spend a lot of time today going through little points in the budget because it's going to be changed dramatically. I think we should just, you know, fairly quickly approve the recommended budget just for the purposes that the, uh, the director uh, Preston suggested. Um, but I, on back on the other point about the uh, reserves, uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't use any reserves. I'm just saying I don't think we should make an assumption on a wholesale basis that we're just going to simply spend the reserves um, and then find ourselves with no reserves and no way to handle any kind of problems that happen later. I think we have to make careful decisions about how much of the reserves we want to use. Because again, both from the city perspective in the past, from my experience and from the transit district, you make a big mistake when you basically try and keep stuff up at the current level until you have nothing. And then you're forced to have such radical and dramatic cuts that you, you would destroy the system completely. So I, I think it makes more sense to be very careful about how much of the reserves we use and have a careful discussion about that before we assume we're going to just use the reserves to spend at the current level uh, or at the level of the budget that we're probably going to approve today, uh, that I think should not be done. I think we should be more careful about that. That's my comment. Those are my two comments. Thank you, Mike. Is there any other commissioner that'd like to have any questions for staff on their report? Uh, well, I uh, raised my hand, but uh, uh, Luis. Uh, yes, uh, uh, ahead, Luis. Here. just uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Just a quick thing. Um, in the past, when we've had similar situations with the commission, is that it's a combination of things, and that is uh, use reserves, uh, but also uh, work to uh, you know modify uh, the apportionments to the, vari to the various uh, jurisdictions if that became necessary, so that so that the reserves would not be fully depleted. Uh, so it is. You know, the commission has has been, you know, responsible in that regard in the past. And that's what we would expect the commission to do. In, in addition, um, the commission has worked to then reduce costs uh, and minimize and minimize costs. Uh, of the commission and also um, work um, extra diligently to try to secure uh, additional funds from other sources, either from the state or federal government, and so on. And through that sort of a strategy, the, the, in the past, the commission has been. Uh, very successful at, at ensuring that you know, when the commission isn't just relying on the reserves, but using a you know uh, a strategy that that combines various uh, um, uh, effort to uh, to get through these into difficult situations. And if I can add on to that too, um, payments payments for um, PDA is made via claims. And those claims would come to the commission, and if there was um, the need to dip into any reserves or to use other funds to try to make payments, we would be able to present that at that time, and the commission would have an opportunity to weigh in. That'd be fine. That would solve my concern. Commissioner Leopold has had his hand up. Go ahead, Commissioner Leopold. I, I don't see people's hands up on my screen, unfortunately. Commissioner Leopold, Commissioner Brown, and then um, those are the two that I'm showing right now. Go ahead, Commissioner Leopold. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I support um, passing uh, this budget, recognizing that it's a it's it's a draft budget that's going to see big changes uh, to keep the 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 uh, machinery of the uh, RTC going. I, I think we did. We had uh, lots of discussion, and we even had some disagreements in building up our reserves. But we showed foresight in creating those reserves. And if there was ever a time to use it, that we're obviously going to be in that period. I do think it's important um, to get through the end of this fiscal year that we use the reserve to be able to honor the commitments that, uh, and the projects that are ongoing. And when we look at the budget for next year once we have more information we may decide what level of the of the, uh, of the reserve we want to use but i think it's important to be able to finish this year um, with the uh, with people who have projects that are that may already be on the ground already be under construction or other uh, critical uh, moments uh, to make sure that those projects can get done uh, and as over the next couple of months as we learn more about what the real uh, financial situation is we'll have to make some uh, difficult decisions for what uh, our next fiscal year looks like. Good point. Thank you. 
Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Brown. Uh, yeah, I think all of my, most of my comments have been covered. I guess I would want to respond to uh, Commissioner Johnson because I agree that um, taken out of context, passing this budget does look quite irresponsible. Um, even some of the materials from HGL suggest that, um, you know, biz business would start going back to normal in April. We know that's not going to be the case. And so I, I totally understand those concerns and I share them. I do think that uh, providing that context, though, about understanding this is a uh, the budget will be the projections will be moving target for the at least uh, short term and then probably, you know, the indefinite future. So I think with that, I'm also persuaded that um, we should pass a budget today. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Is there any other commissioner that'd like to comment or have a question on the staff report? Uh, commissioner Kaufman Gomez is having issues with her um, audio, but she did send a note saying that this will give us a chance to evaluate how to conservatively use our reserves. We also have a working fluid budget document that we already know we will closely monitor. She does agree we need to document what impact is on our current budget and this COVID-19 uh, impact will have on our agency. Um, I also have a comment from Commissioner McPherson um, and his is um, understanding our budget is a moving target. He approves the proposed budget with the expectation it will be amended in the future. Thank you. Is there any other commissioner that uh, that has any questions on the staff report? I, I have, I have uh, one. Actually, I, I support um, doing this. Uh, I think it's important that we give a base and continue with that base, and then move forward and um, to our projects. Uh, it's vital, I think, that some of these projects continue because it's also part of the economic stimulus for our community. Um, and so looking at our reserves diligently and, and, and using them uh, appropriately, I think is going to be a really important thing and the flexibility of our, of our uh, budget uh, to be able to amend it will, will give us the opportunity to, to really look at it and give that opportunity for our, our budget committee to really dive into the next months uh, and try to try to kind of try to predict what's going to might happen, uh, which is uh, uh, an enormous task in itself. Uh, I do have one question for staff. Uh, staff, on your report, you, you've indicated that you've been communicating with the communities. Uh, what type of communication have you been making? Uh, and uh, I guess I want to say directly to the city of Watsonville in regards to this budget. Um, so Rachel Marconi is our lead for Measure D and she has um, been reaching out and communicating with the local jurisdictions about Measure D in particular. Um, for TDA, I do know that uh, the executive director has been speaking with the CEO at Metro and that the cities and counties have been contacted as well. Um, with, it, with the information, the limited we would communicate more as we receive it. Okay, thank you. I have a question when, when you're ready. This is Mike. Mike, go ahead, Mike. Yes, so Mike. My question is to, to Guy or to, to some of the staff. Um, it makes sense to me to adopt this re uh, resolution that approves the budget. I wonder whether we also have to accept the uh, revenue forecast. The other, there were, we had four recommendations on this item, um, and those revenue estimates are what are actually clearly not going to be accurate. And I wonder, is it possible to pass the budget without approving those uh, revenue projections, which are clearly off? <clears throat> um, we are obligated by the TDA ordinance to provide um, estimates to the recipients for TDA. Um, I don't know, and maybe Luis can comment on it, whether or not it needs to be part of the board's recommendation or not. So I'm gonna defer to Luis as to whether or not that that's a critical part of this um, recommendation at this time. Go ahead, Luis. Okay. Well, on the um, uh, the recommendations that are, that are before you, uh, the revenue um, uh, projections that, that or forecasts that are asked to be um, 
except they have to do with with measure d because we take uh, we take the uh, revenue estimates from the auditor uh, controls office for tda and we just uh and, and those are the official estimates and those are used by the by the rtc for the budget that's you know per uh tda statute but for measure d that that is an rtc uh, administered um uh, program uh and it's part of the rtc's function to uh, provide some sort of revenue um, um, forecast for measure d uh, funds and those of course are based on the, on the information that we get from our consultants that um, hdl services that analyze the revenues and let us know what they are but of course this analysis was prior uh, to COVID 19 and at this point they do not know uh, exactly what the um uh, the impact of COVID-19 is going to be. The revenue estimates will, again, just provide a base uh, uh, for the uh, uh, local jurisdictions that re the, uh, and Santa Cruz Metro and then community just that receive funds uh, for Measure D at this point. And it is communicated to everyone that actual revenues they receive are not based on this forecast. They are based on the uh, uh, the actual revenues that come in, uh, and and that is you know per uh, what's written in Measure D. So I think it, regardless of whether the RTC approves a revenue forecast or not, uh, that will continue uh, per Measure D to pro, you know to provide everyone with the um, uh, with the revenues as they come in. One. Uh, one component of the uh, revenue forecast, well, is the, um, uh, well, I guess the, the five-year revenue estimates uh, uh, for the measure D recipients. Um, that's what derives partly from the forecast and partly from the uh, uh, update of the variables that go into the formula that's specified in measure D for the distribution of funds to the uh, cities and the county. And you may recall that it's a formula that, that involves uh, um, population, it involves um, road lane miles, it also involves uh, the, the site where uh, the Measure D uh, revenues uh, uh, or are derived from. Uh, so uh, since that, that is information that gets, that gets updated each, each year, you know, I think it, it is a good idea to accept that that piece is saying, okay, it's, it, it does have the updated uh, information and uh, for the formula and it's, uh, uh, and it's, you know, uh, we, we feel it, it's acceptable. Uh, and, but then that formula will, will get applied to the actual revenues that get received, not to the forecast revenues. So, so my, Mike. Yes. So my thought is we should, uh, I'm hearing that. So we should add a whereas to the resolution that appears on 20-7 um, that in effect, uh, Guy could, sum, you know, summarizing Guy's comments, uh, whereas we understand that, you know, the effect that whereas uh, the, it could be as a result of the COVID-19 uh, uh, economic fallout from the economic, from the COVID-19 virus, we mm -hmm. that our revenue projections will have to be amended during the year uh there's an understanding that in effect this is a preliminary budget that is going to be subject to serious but potentially subject to serious amendment and add that i'd be happy to move this uh move the staff recommendation on all four points we still need to hear from the public i understand i'm just going to put a motion on the floor so people know where we're going Yes, I would like. Well, I would Thank prefer go ahead, waiting Dan. until we heard to the public because yes, I'm not. Okay. I don't agree with that's the best way to make the motion. Yes. Okay, I, I won't accept no motion yet. Uh, I was just a, a comment. Okay, let's come back. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. There is there any other questions for the staff from commissioners? Hearing none, I'd like to open this up to the public. Is there any public that has? Uh, any questions on the uh, agenda item number 20, approval of fiscal year? You mean questions or comments, I assume? Questions or comments, sorry, thank you. Yes, I have my hand up. 
Is that audience? Yes. Um, this is Sally Arnold from Friends of the Rail and Trail. Go ahead, Sally. You've been um, recognized. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, of course, thank you everybody for, you know, we're all just doing our best to try to keep business moving along and keep the public engaged in these difficult times. Um, and we, um, you know, Friends of the Rail and Trails looked this over and we appreciate how hard it is to, to plan. And I mean, you're, you know, the discussion here has been very rich and nuanced about wanting to move things along and yet recognize the uncertainties that, you know, you're dealing with. Um, and so Friends of the Rail and Trail understands that that this is a proposed budget and it's going to be subject to the economic changes that are coming. Um, and, you know, whenever those changes come, of course, that's going to be reflected, I assume, in the work program. Um, you know, because less money probably means a different work program. And we just request that those changes be tracked in the work program document using the underline and strike through system so that they're clear to the public. Because for those of us who are trying to follow these things closely, that would just make it a lot easier for us to understand what the on the ground impacts are going to be of any budget changes. Um, and other than that, you know, we just support your efforts to, to try to keep moving in these hard times. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Please mute your phones if you're not speaking. We have a lot of uh, noise. Is there, is there anyone else from the public that like to, that has a question or make a comment on this item? Uh, yeah, Michael Singh. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, yeah, just a couple of questions probably for Director Preston. Um, if, if this, you know, funding scenario gets quite bleak, um, this is maybe down the road, have you set any priorities for which pieces of the UCIS uh, pie will be funded? In other words, will you take money from certain pieces to go to other pieces? or keep the percentages the same no matter what the funding is and then question two the concern on a piece of pie that i have is with metro's funding um and with that previous question would you be able to transfer monies from other pieces of the uh, ucis corridor study pie uh, and transfer to metro to keep them surviving basically as you had stated earlier, the funding coming from the federal yeah, government yeah. is not enough to help help the uh, a metro to the degree that they may need some help. And that's my two questions. Thank you, Mike. Is there anybody else from the public that'd like to make a comment or a question on the item on the agenda, number 20? There's a comment from uh, Mr. Clifford on the chat. I'm not sure if he's on the phone. Um, Alex, are you on the phone or did you, or should I read his comments? Go ahead and read his comment, please. Okay. It says, I concur with Guy relative to the budget adoption. RTC can amend the budget later when the COVID impacts become more clear. The impacts both short-term and long-term of COVID on TDA is yet to to be determined. We need to collaborate with the California Transit Association ASAP to impress upon state officials the need for a, a state stimulus program that will attempt to fund TDA and in parentheses STA and LF LTF at this point if the CARES Act will allow us to write off state subsidy revenue losses against the 5307 grant funding. That was it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clifford, for those comments. Uh, is there anybody else from the public that'd like to comment or have a question on item 20 of the agenda? Hearing none, I'd like to bring this back to the commission uh, to hear a motion. If I could try to make it, which would be to this is Andy Schifrin. Go ahead, Andy. I recognize you. Um, I would uh, move that we approve the recommendations one through four of the Budget and Administration Personnel Committee and add an additional uh, recommendation to uh, direct staff to return at the main meeting with an update of the budget situation and any recommendations to amend the 2021 budget or and or the revenue estimates 
Do I have a second? I'll second that. Second. Second by Mike. That's second by Jock. I heard, okay. right? Okay, second by Jock. Yeah. Second by Jock. Can we have roll call? Commissioner Bertrand. Aye. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. No. Commissioner Caput. Aye. Commissioner Alternate Schifrin. Aye. Commissioner Leopold. Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Rockin. Aye. And Commissioner Kaufman Gomez votes yes and Bruce votes uh, yes. Thank you. That seems to have passed. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and um, move on to item 21. Next meeting. Our next meeting for the RTC meeting is scheduled for Thursday, May 7th at 9 a.m. Uh, and the next transportation policy workshop meeting is scheduled for Thursday, April 16th at 9 a.m. Right. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you for your dedication. Um, I have nothing further to say. Thank you. <laughs> good job. Good job. Good job of chairing under difficult conditions. Yes. Yeah. And yes, Tina, you did a great job monitoring. Yes. Thank yes. You. Great job chairing. Great job chairing when you didn't know you were going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's Bruce? Bruce said he wasn't going to miss a meeting. <laughs> you guys all oh, God. Do we, need, do we need another practice? Oh, we did pretty well, but still. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. All right. Signing off. Bye bye. bye.